Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. So we're in the cooking segment of Smidgen now, and I'm joined here with store staffer Sarah. And we're gonna be cooking up a dish that um, comes to me by my interview that I just finished up with Marcel B. Avenue, who's an instructor at the John Fulce Culinary Institute. But this is a recipe that uh, has been out there in the world. She was the food editor at the Times Picayune for years. And this is a recipe that I turn to again and again uh, for Thanksgiving, mostly, uh, but delicious any time of the year. So are you ready to start cooking? I'm ready. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So let's start some cut chop before we dig into what you do for me and why we're so lucky to have you here at Red Stick Spice. Okay. Right. We need a chopped onion and we need some chopped bell pepper. We probably don't need all of that red and green bell pepper, but why don't you go after about half of that and okay. a pretty small dice, and then we'll get this chopped up. So... Um, my interview that I just finished up with Marcel B. Avenue, she was one of my instructors at when I went to culinary school. And she joined the university when I was a senior, and this was around 2010. And she had a um, very successful career in New Orleans. She worked for Emeril Lagasse. She was the editor of the Times Picayune. She she's written many, many cookbooks. The classes I took from her at uh, Nichols, her books were the textbook oh, wow. for the course. So I was super excited when she came on board and I was able to study with her for a year at the school. But she is a long time, very knowledgeable Cajun Creole cook. And this is one of her recipes um, that you and I are going to cook up. Where is she from originally? Because the Avenue sounds like a Cajun name. New so. Iberia. Oh, okay. Well, so awesome. She, Hometown you probably, because you're from New Iberia. Yes. Okay. So she and I were talking about teachers and who our teachers, who we, who we sort of tick off as our, as our favorite teachers mm -hmm. throughout of our, our lives or careers. And, um, you know, she's definitely one of mine. And then she told me a lot about who she saw as her teachers. But this is a perfect segue into you because, right. <laughs> like me, your mom was a teacher. Yes. My mom was a kindergarten teacher. Your mom was a kindergarten teacher. Yeah, my mom taught kindergarten for most of her career. And then she, when kindergarten started to be too tough, as she put it, right. kindergarten is now a lot like first grade, Yeah. Um, she decided she wanted to move down to pre-K. So she moved down to pre-K three, which was kind of what kindergarten, I think, used to be. Right. Uh, a lot of playing, um, you know, role playing, dress up, uh, art, very just like learning about school, how to be at school, things like that, rather than the actual getting into reading and things like that that you now do in kindergarten. So, so I remember my kindergarten report card. Mm -hmm. I, you'll be happy to know. I was probably like tie my. I could tie my shoes. No, I could. I know skip. my address. Skip. Yeah. I could skip. I could also walk a balance beam. Right. It's like it was motor skills and those just life skills, things like that. And, and it plays well with others. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So um, that's funny. Um, but you came to me a few months ago looking for a part time job because yes. you are growing a new a new business of your own. Right. Um, but you just recently left teaching. Yes, you're, I sure you're did. You're a master degree teacher teaching first grade. Yes. So, yeah, I taught for eight years. Um, I taught two years in a private school in New Iberia, a little small private school. Um, and then I moved to Baton Rouge, or back to Baton Rouge after I graduated from LSU and um, worked at a charter school here for six and a half years. Okay, okay. Um, all doing first grade. Okay, so I saw that in you um, a little bit last night. So <laughs> you were setting, helping me set up. We taught a class last night called Curries, Cocktails, and Cookies. Yes. And, and add the onion, yeah, I mean the so let's get those bell peppers in there, and okay. I'm going to crank the heat up, and I also need some fat in here, so I'm going to do our garlic extra virgin olive oil. So we need these to saute, and then we'll get the rest of the ingredients in. So we were setting up for the class last night, which right. I'm so happy to have you with us. Yeah, I love helping with cooking it's cooking so classes, fun. and I'm glad I'm glad that fits in with what with what you're trying to do. Right, but um, you needed the recipes in order to finish setting up the class mm -hmm. and so I went into my office <laughs> to print the recipes yes. and I saw a squirrel and I began filing my receipts. Right. I cleaned my purse and I started filing my receipts and you walked in. And I came in said, about 10 minutes later and I was like are you printing those recipes that I told you to print? So I kept having to go remind her that I needed the recipes. Which printed. is a little bit like 
first grade. Yes. The, yeah. So yeah, I think the average attention span for kids is whatever their age is, is that's how many minutes. Okay. So for first graders, oh, I'm not doing them, too good. Most of them are six years old or seven years old, so their attention span would be six to seven minutes, which is really hard when you're trying to do something that obviously everything takes longer than six or seven minutes. So. But Sarah, so now <laughs> let's explain what your new business is. So you have started a professional organizing business. Yes, professional so when you organizing. were clearly not happy that I hadn't printed the recipes, I then said, but I'm organized. She did. She tried to make up for it, saying she was organizing her receipts, which is great. But we needed to focus on the class for right now and get everything read up, ready and set up for that. And, and that's then, called redirecting. That's right. So that's thank right. you for that. I tried to affirm your your need for organizing right then and there, but yeah. we needed to do our other tasks first. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to teachers. Yes. Who are who are those teachers you think about, like from your childhood? I have a seventh grade English teacher, Mrs. Okay. Walton, mm -hmm. who I credit for. I prior to culinary, I was a, I study marketing and I worked right. as a copywriter in advertising and I love to write and writing is like huge for what I do right now. Um, so Mrs. Walton in seventh grade was um, who made me love like grammar right. and writing and that sort of thing. Hmm. I would say a lot of my lower elementary school teachers really stuck with me. Yeah. School was just so fun. You know, I yeah. remember it just being really fun. I remember our teachers being very almost like laid back in yeah. a sense that they would almost let us like convince them to let us do fun stuff if we got our work done. Right. And so I remember one of my, um, I guess, I think she was my first grade teacher. No, she was my second grade teacher. Mm -hmm. um, we used to take walks around the neighborhood, which I feel like nowadays that would be completely never would be able to happen how, in how many school. how many permission slips would you have to exactly. have signed right you know in order to do that we'd have to have you know the first aid kit and the back you know all right. that kind of stuff but we used to just convince her to let us walk around the you know go for a walk in the neighborhood in the afternoon and i just remember that being just such a fun time because i don't know i guess as a kid you're like oh we're, we're breaking out of school like kind of a thing yeah even though we were with our teacher it was obviously fine sure but um yeah, so she was one of my teachers that I, her name was Miss Polk. She was one of my second grade teachers. Okay. She to, and we also would have class outside a lot, which yeah. was fun. Obviously, uh, I just, the teachers that let us go outside, apparently that stuck with me. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I remember being actually very terrified of her. Mm -hmm. um, she was always just very, like, loud. And she, she didn't really fuss, but I think she just had a loud voice. And as a little kid, I guess that was just kind of scary. Right. Um, but once I was in her class and I realized that she wasn't scary or mean or anything like that. Right. Um, she ended up being one of my favorites. But yeah, she used to, she was pretty lenient on us. She let us go outside a lot and do class outside. And yeah. Go for walks and things like that. I guess she didn't really influence me academically. But yeah. it made me love school because it was fun. You know. But I think she influenced you a lot. Yeah, that, I think so. You know, to watch you tell that story, yeah. that's pretty cool. So you have decided that you've left teaching and you're going to start this business. Right. And your business is called South Coast Organizers. Organizers. Yes. And you recently published a blog that I read and loved. Yes, thank and you. And my favorite part of the story is your first recollection of organizing. I do. I actually, because I... Someone asked me that question recently, um, and so I kind of had to sit down and think back about it because I kind of didn't remember when my first aha moment of, of right. this is an actual skill. Right. Um, but then I, when I sat down and really thought about it, I thought about the summers um, in between school. My mom was a school teacher, so she was off during the summers and she used to stay home with us. Mm -hmm. And so she always would have kind of a list of projects that we would do every summer. And one of the things we would do every summer was we would clean out the whole house. We would mm -hmm. declutter is what everyone's calling it now. I right. guess is the buzzword. Right. But um, we would declutter and we would go through all of our clothes and we'd go through all the closets and, you know, the, well, we didn't have a garage, but like the shed and the attic and all these things. And I didn't know that that was like different than anybody else. I thought that was just something that everyone did. Right. And I kind of carried that into my adulthood. Even when I was teaching yeah. first grade, you know, I was off for the summer. I never... I never took a summer job. When right. I was, a lot of other teachers take summer jobs. Right. I never did. Um, that was my time to kind of do those things for myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I kind of started to realize that not everyone else does that. Yeah. And not a lot of people have time for that. Nobody has summers off. Yeah. So 
So that was um, like your first, like... Yeah, and so I kind of thought back to my childhood, and I remember we had this one closet that was like our holiday decorations mm -hmm. and a lot of like crafting supplies, because we used to do a lot of like art projects and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I remember taking everything out of that closet and finding little containers for the beads and the ribbons and all these things. And I remember putting it back and just being like, oh, look how, you know, look it how pretty fit. it looks and it all fit and it was all neat. And I just remember like that making me so happy. Yeah. And then a couple of years ago, I kind of did the same thing with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. She uh, was kind of overwhelmed. She was trying to get her house together and um, I'd spent the weekend with her and I was off for the summer. So I said, well, how about I stay another day or two and we kind of do some organizing projects. And so we ended up working for 14 hours straight on her house. Oh my gosh. Like we started with one room and we're like, okay, we're just gonna do this room. And I'm like, well, what about this? What about this? And I kept just like going, going. It just gave me so much energy. To yeah. Just, Cause I had been wanting to clean, clean it so bad. Yeah. So long, like, you know, you go to your friend's houses and you wanna, you wanna clean stuff, but you don't wanna overstep. Right. But like I got to, I was like, okay, she's letting me do it. I'm gonna like really get this house organized. Right. And her husband was so excited when he got home. He was like, I can't believe y'all did all this in a day. So that's that so kind awesome. of got me, got the ball rolling and yeah. the idea going. And so for, now it's a business. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. Yes. We've got to get moving on this dish. So I, what I smell is magic. Yeah. It's um, so good. Yeah. So onion, bell pepper, a little bit of fat, nothing really bad ever happened when those came together right. and a cast iron skillet. So we start on the stovetop and this moves to the oven and Marcel in her original recipe has it uh, transferred into a casserole dish, which is fine, but okay. we're just going to move this straight into the oven. So what we're going to do now is, so these are really, really nicely browned and starting to soften and yeah, beautiful color so and smell wonderful. It smells like my childhood, basically. <laughs> right. New Iberia. Yes. Yeah. This is what New Iberia smells, smells Every like. Every dish starts with onion and bell pepper. Exactly. So we are going to get the cream corn in here and then I need you to take this fork okay. and very carefully beat that egg and we're going to get that in there. And we're going to get the egg in here. It's kind of a, when I first made it, I was like, these aren't enough ingredients to do what she's talking about, but it all works out. So and that's creamed corn that you use? It is creamed corn. And um, what ends up happening is it's sort of like a corn pudding at the oh, end. Yeah. Um, so we've got the cream corn in there. We add the milk. Go ahead and get the egg in here. And I'll start getting that all incorporated. I don't want any corn left behind. So let's get all of that in there. Do you usually use like full fat milk when you cook? Or? Yeah, so this is definitely full fat milk. Okay. Um, I could see this coming together with some half and half or cream for yeah, sure. That would be delicious. But it works really well with the milk. So it's super soupy right now. We're going to add cornmeal in a moment, but we need this to. Thicken just a bit. So go ahead and sprinkle our cornmeal in there. Let's get some heat. Is there a difference between cornmeal and like what would be like a cornbread mix? Or does that have cornmeal yeah, so in it? Yeah, corn, so cornbread mix is going to have leaveners in it. So it's oh, going to okay. have um, your baking powder or baking soda or something like okay. that. There's probably some cornstarch in there. Um, making your own cornbread is a cinch just using cornmeal corn okay. um, and it's all about the coarseness, coarseness of the cornmeal and which one works better so this is a just a traditional very fine ground cornmeal this is also what you would use to make polenta okay so you go ahead and just dump it all in there i'm going to switch to a whisk just for a second and get that all incorporated it's starting to thicken i can mm -hmm. feel it pulling against my whisk so tell me, so in your brief tenure with Red Stick Spice, yes. you have been, uh, we won't say roped into, but <laughs> roped into two photo shoots. I feel like you're always like, oh, we're doing this tiny little thing today. Can you come by? We're doing this tiny thing that's really <laughs> weird, and I'm going to need you to get a manicure. Right, yeah. And um, don't wear stripes or plaid. Right, yeah, I get so specific uh, this outfit is, requests. This and, is yeah. <laughs> photo shoot number three yes. for you. And but now I get to put on my resume that I'm a hand model. I'm there you go. Hand model, there you go. So I so, think that works out for me, you know, in my favor. One of my favorite things that happened so far with having you on staff was 
we did a karaoke cooking class. Yeah, that All was right. so much fun. <laughs> so let me just talk about the numerous levels of hate I got about this is not going to work, oh. so much shade about yeah. no one's going to do that, it's going to be super awkward. I honestly can't recall having that much fun in no, a long, long period all. of time. It was, yeah, it was and so much fun. And can we talk super... about your Backstreet Boys? Was it Backstreet Boys? Yeah. Well, okay. I said several things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Backstreet Boys for sure. Loud and proud. Always. And I'm perhaps... a huge Backstreet fan. Can I actually just... won tickets to, the, to go see the Backstreet Boys in September, and I'm really excited okay. about it. And can we just <laughs> go ahead and get Tone Deaf out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was like, what is it? Obviously, I'm, I'm definitely toned up on my own skills, but uh, yeah, no, I am a terrible singer, 100%, but I have great stage presence. It was wonderful. And I have great dance moves, It was very so enjoyable. So it makes up for my terrible voice. Okay. So <laughs> we've got a teaspoon of seasoning going in. I'm using our salt-free Cajun Creole blend. We call it The Stuff. It's nice. just all those Cajun Creole flavors without the salt. Mm -hmm. And I did put a little bit of salt in here, and I'm going to combine that. This is bubbling away and th starting to thicken. And then this goes in the oven. We, we put a few pats of butter on the top, and then this goes in the oven to brown and cook. This happens in probably about 30 minutes. This will be cooked butter. and browned. And, um, and then we're gonna taste it in just a, in just a minute. Yeah, we're gonna grab some butter for okay. it. All right, we are back. It's been 30 minutes that the corn creole has been in the oven. And so let's see what happened here. And it's called Majestic. Yeah, it smells so good. So, so gorgeous. So I'm gonna serve a little bit of it up, but we need to let it cool for a minute. And I do wanna talk about a couple things that transpired while we were waiting for this to bake. So first let's get this served up. It's like a corn pudding. Yeah, I was gonna say it kinda the, has the consist consistency mm -hmm. more of like a pudding. Right, and um, with a nice crispy top. But while we were baking, the crew was talking about, was getting shots of the Cajun Creole spice blend. And I said, this is our salt free Cajun Creole spice blend and we call it the stuff. And then they were getting close ups of it and they were like, oh. It's actually called. It's called the, the stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's called the stuff. So salt free spice blends, we have tons of them in the store. It's a big help for folks who ha may have a diet protocol right. that call, calls for it. But also I like them because I get to control the salt. Right. So while, and there, and there is salt in this dish and I just got to control it. But yeah, good Cajun Creole flavor. That salt-free, a lot of salt-free Cajun Creole blends just go crazy with the cayenne to substitute for the salt. And that's nice. not what this one did. So okay. just really good flavor. So it's not too spicy. Right, right. Okay, so we're about to dig in. Let me get us a couple of spoons and then you're gonna tell me what you think. Okay. I'm wondering if this reminds you of home. Now it's super hot. And see, I'm trying to think back. I, I don't think my grandmother, my grandmother was a, the big cook um, in our family. And I don't think she ever made this. Mm -hmm. I, I remember more of like a corn mock shoe that she would make. Right. So I, I think as a child, I don't think I would eat it because I thought it looked gross. So but I would shoe, probably eat it now. Mock shoe is one of my absolute favorite oh, really? things. Yeah. yeah. And definitely something that um, if you love Cajun food, mock shoe is definitely one mm -hmm. you should make. But um, this is oh, that's really good. Isn't that so crazy good? Yes. So, and it's so simple. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm really liking the crust on the top. Oh my too. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So an absolute side dish for Thanksgiving. Um, but this would be something my daughter who's a vegetarian, mm -hmm. this would be something that she would definitely chow down on. What would you cook on the side of this? So if you were to like make this as a side dish, like, maybe not for Thanksgiving, if you were just doing like a Sunday dinner or something. Yeah. Oh, I would do um, a pork roast or pork tenderloin or chicken. I mean, just about anything. Yeah. Um, I love the sweetness from the corn and then the savory from the aromatics. But like you said, it's not a ton of ingredients. Right. And it seems super weird when it's coming together with all that milk and egg that goes in on the right, stove top. Right, right. But it's totally all there. Um, we did pat it with butter, do some pats of butter on the top, and that's where it, that beautiful GBD, that golden brown and delicious yeah. is coming from. But yeah, super Wait, what simple. did you call that? The what? G GBD, golden brown and delicious. I it's love a that. super <laughs> technical term that everyone should know. Yeah, I love that. Um, so this is fun for me because this is a great memory of Marcel, one of my favorite teachers. Um, and I'm so curious, what did you learn today? So... 
I learned, well, like I said, I've so never made a corn pudding before, so okay. I've seen, like I said, corn mashu and cornbread pudding and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I actually like this better than a cornbread pudding. So I think I would make this probably nice. before. Yeah. So you think this could be in your rough Oh form? yeah, I definitely could make this for, for sure. sure. Well, Marcel's going to be excited about that. Yeah, right. I don't want to meet her. She's one of my, my hometown New Iberia girls. Yeah, we'll have to get her in the store. She's super for sure. Cool. All right, that was awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>